Hello everybody and welcome to Crafternoon. Today I'm going to be sharing another really cool art project with you. So I want you to activate your creative mind, warm up those fingers, and grab a grown-up if you think you might need some extra help. My name is Tara and I work for the Ottawa Public Library. Today we are going to be creating a super amazing three-dimensional artwork optical illusion of your hand. Stick around for a list of items you're going to need to complete this project. Here is a list of items you're going to need to complete this awesome optical illusion of a three-dimensional hand. A sheet of white printer paper, a pencil, an eraser, a black marker, a pencil sharpener, a ruler, an assortment of colored pencil crayons, and for the finishing touches of this art project you may also want to have a glue stick and a sheet of colored construction paper. For our first step, we're going to begin with our sheet of white printer paper, and you're also going to need your pencil. We're going to start by tracing around our hand. Start at the bottom of the sheet of paper where your wrist comes onto the page and then slowly and carefully trace around all of your fingers. If your pencil goes in a direction you didn't expect it to go in, you can always erase and trace over again. Tracing around your hand and coming all the way back down to your wrist. So you wanna make sure that your line starting at your wrist is right against the bottom of the page and that it also finishes at the bottom of the page. Now that we've traced our hand, we're going to turn our sheet of paper on its side like so. You're now going to need your ruler and you're still going to want your pencil handy and you may need an eraser. So now we're going to be tracing lines from top to bottom this way. Now once you reach the fingers, we're going to be skipping over the fingers and tracing the lines in between. So watch carefully as I do this. You can space your lines out as you wish. So you can make them all the same width, or you can make some thinner and some thicker. So I'm gonna do one wide one, and then followed by three thin ones, and then I'm gonna repeat my pattern like that. But you can make your lines the width that you want, okay? So I did one wide one, I'm going to do three skinnier lines. And then one wide one. Okay, now you'll see that I've reached the fingers. So watch carefully as I skip over the section where the fingers are. So here's a finger. I'm going to lift my pencil up and then continue on the other side. So once you reach the fingers, you want to take your time so that you're not drawing straight through them. Lift it up. Continue, lift it up again, and continue to the other side. So wherever there is a finger, you're going to lift up your pencil and just do the lines in between the fingers, okay? So I'm gonna continue doing these lines all the way down to this bottom side of the page where the wrist is, and I will be back shortly to show you what that looks like. Okay, so 
so as you can see, I've traced all of my lines all the way over to the wrist of the hand. So at this point, we're going to turn our page upright again so that we're looking at our hand straight on. And this next step is where the magic happens because this is what one of the steps anyways that makes this hand look really three dimensional, like it's popping off the page. So our hand is going to look like it's been wrapped in some kind of uh, gift wrap or wrapping paper or even a wallpaper. It's going to look like someone has put paper on top of our hand, but our hand is underneath that paper. Okay, so the way that we're going to create part of this illusion is all of the spaces where we left no line in between where the fingers are, we're going to create a little curve. So you're going to find where the line kind of meets the finger and you're going to create a little curve or a bump that goes up towards the top. So it might be kind of like the shape of a fingernail if you think of that shape. And you can see what I'm doing here. It's just kind of a little arch, okay? And then you want it to meet the other line over there. So there's a little tiny one here. Uh, we can go over here and create another one. So you're going to go all the way down the page, creating these little arches where the fingers are. So it's kind of like the shape of a rainbow almost, or a little bridge. And you just want to create that little bump, okay? So what that does, if you look at these fingers now, they almost look like they are raised or that they're actually a real, that there may actually be a real hand under there, okay? So you're going to want to do that with all of the fingers. And then once you get down here to the hand, sometimes it can become a little bit trickier. So where the hand... There are no more fingers and the hand, uh, the palm of the hand is, you're going to create an even bigger arch. So you're going to go from one end all the way to the other and create a large arch. Okay. So I'm going to continue doing this and then I will be back to show you what that looks like once this step is complete. So as you can see, I've drawn all of my curves along my fingers of my hand and the palm of the hand, the thumb and the down to the wrist. So now that we've done that, and if you're happy with all of your pencil marks, you can now take your black marker and you're going to trace the line of your hand with your black marker. And then you're going to put your sheet of paper on its side, take your ruler again, and line up your ruler with your pencil lines, and you're going to draw your lines or trace over them with your black marker as well. Okay, so you're going to cover the entire page now by tracing with your black marker everywhere where you have pencil lines, starting with the outline of your hand and then tracing your lines and making sure that you go over the curves of your fingers and your palm and your wrist. All right, as you can see, I've finished tracing all of my pencil lines with my black marker and for the straight lines I did use my ruler to line them up and then to use my marker and trace a nice straight line over top of my pencil lines with my black marker. Alright, so now we can turn our sheet of paper upright again so that we're looking at the hand straight on. And this next step is going to involve our pencil crayons. So you can get those out. And what I like to do for this step, because I want my hand to look like it's trapped underneath some gift wrap or some wallpaper, 
Um, I'm going to be doing my colors in a pattern. So I'm only going to choose four colors and I'm going to repeat them in order. So I think, let me see what I have here. I think I'll choose turquoise. Um, I'll use this nice purple, this nice deep pink, and I like this uh, sort of a navy blue color. All right. So those are the four pencils I'm going to use. I'm going to put my other ones away so I don't get them mixed up. I do not need my ruler anymore and I don't need my black marker. So I'm going to repeat them in a sequence. And so I'm going to start at the top of the page and I'm going to start by applying medium pressure with my pencil crayon. So I'd like it to be dark enough but not the darkest it can be because there's another step when we're coloring once we get closer to the hand where you're going to have to apply a lot more pressure so um, try not to apply the most pressure here just a medium amount and you're going to continue coloring your artwork with that amount of pressure all the way down through all of these lines. So the next one I'm going to do is going to be this pink. So the next line will be pink. And then the next one I'm going to do is going to be purple. And the last one will be the navy blue. And then I'm going to repeat the cycle. So I always know that when I get to my thick one, I'm going to be using the turquoise. And that's where the pattern's going to repeat. Okay, so I'm gonna do that all the way down, repeating those colors. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you the finished product and I'm going to show you and I'm going to explain what uh, I've done around the fingers of the hand. Okay, see you soon. Okay, everybody, it took a little while, but I'm finished coloring in my three dimensional hand. So you'll notice that I've applied medium pressure in these areas around and inside the hand. But if you look directly on either side of the contour of the hand itself, I've applied a lot more pressure to create a deeper color so that the hand looks like it is in shadow in certain parts. So if you take a really good look at this hand, you'll notice that there's a lighter area in the center of the wrist and the hand and the fingers. So if this were a real hand, that would be where the light would hit the hand. And these other areas where the hand and the wrist would curve down would be in a bit more shadow. So that's why we've darkened the areas on either side of the line of the contour of the hand, okay? Now, I always like to use my pencil crayons and color in the same direction. It just creates a neater artwork, I find. And you'll also want to have a pencil sharpener handy because pencil crayons can wear down a lot more quickly than a regular lead pencil. And sometimes the lead can be broken inside a colored pencil. So what you could do in that instance is just pull out the piece of loose lead and then continue sharpening your pencil crayon so that it's nice and sharp again and then just continue from that point on. Okay? Um, now most artists like to sign their work and they normally sign at the bottom right. But you don't have to sign your work if you don't want to. Or if you do want to sign your work, but you don't want to sign it down here, you can sign your artwork anywhere you like. Now, for the finishing touches, I always like to frame my art with a piece of colored construction paper. And I like to kind of play around with a few different colors just to see what color of frame I like best. So here's what turquoise looks like. Here is what a pink frame would look like. Here is what a purple frame might look like. And here is what a navy blue frame would look like. So I think I like this navy blue. So what I would do then is I would take my glue stick, I would turn my artwork over, 
I would put some glue on the back of my artwork and then I would gently turn it over and I would carefully center it on my sheet of construction paper and then I would press down with my hands so that it would stick nicely to the construction paper underneath. And voila! Our three-dimensional hand is complete. Well, I really want to thank you all for joining me today to create our three-dimensional optical illusion of our hand. If you had fun today, don't forget to like this video and please subscribe to our YouTube channel. You may also want to visit our website at biblioottawalibrary.ca where you will find some wonderful activities and resources. I hope to see you soon for another Crafternoon. Bye!